How to create a stellar QuickBooks Online budget. So far, if you look back at sort of the history of what I've published here on the Fundier Ledger, you'll see that going back to the beginning, I started talking about some of the common reports that most small business owners are already aware uh, need to be looked at. In fact, the way I like to explain it is what most business owners ask me, the first question most business owners ask me is, how much money do I have? And that's explained on the balance sheet. Then they want to know how much money did I make? And that's explained on the PL. And then I want to know if they understand how much out of what they've made is being retained. And that's back to the balance sheet in the equity section. And then I also want them to know out of what they've made and what they've retained, where ultimately their cash flow, where is it coming from? Is it coming from operations or is it coming from financing or investing activities? These are things that are important to know, but these are all history reports. And at a certain point, we want to get past the history reports and start getting into what I like to call let's make history reports, right? And that's essentially what a budget or a forecast winds up being. It's what do we want these numbers to look like going into the future? How much money do you want to make? Let's look at that monthly. What are your expenses going to be? Or what would we like them to be? Or what do we expect them to be? And that's looking at the expenses on a monthly basis. And I think the difference really between a budget and a forecast is the budget is what we expect them to be. The forecast is what we'd like them to be. So I prefer to think of it as a forecast when I'm creating it because I prefer to think in terms of the fact that we do have control over these things. I think saying that we're going to create a budget, which is what we expect things to be, almost leaves out the factor of having any control over what we're doing with our business, right? But we all have control. We can control our spending. We can decide what we want to spend and where and how much. And granted, sometimes we get a bill that's unexpectedly high, but we can stop and look and, and figure out quickly enough that we overspent somewhere or spent more than we really wanted to and then make whatever adjustments we need to make accordingly. This is why I think it's really important to have a budget and QuickBooks Online gives us a platform for doing this and that's what today's video is all about. I want to show you exactly how to create a stellar QuickBooks Online budget. Let's have a look at my screen and I'll show you what this looks like. If we go into QuickBooks Online and of course I'm in a sample company here, the first thing is how to get into the budgeting area. So we want to click on the gear icon here. That's where you'll find it. And then within that, you'll find it here under tools. So it's under the tools. That's where you find the whole budgeting area within QuickBooks Online. You'll see I've got two budgets created here as samples. But first, I want to show you how to add a budget. It's really hard to figure out. You click right here where it says add budget. And when you click on that, you're going to be given some choices. First of all, you can name the budget. So let's say I want to call this 2019 budget. And then the fiscal year would be fiscal year 2019, right? And you'll see that your choices really are just in terms of the years. Any budget that you do here is going to be based on the P&L. There's no option to do a budget based on balance sheet accounts. Uh, the interval will choose monthly. Pre-filled data is where you can take actual data from a prior year, right? 2016 or you know 2017 year to date, theoretically. You could grab the actual data from January through May and let that populate in so that you have that to kind of work with as a starting point, right? And then here you can subdivide by customer or not, right? And if you subdivide by customer, then you have to choose the customer that you're working on. And when I do that, I'll choose, for example, customer by customer, maybe what their income is going to be. And then any expenses that I know will be directly associated with that customer would go into the appropriate expense account while that customer is selected. Then you'll have things like rent or overhead that aren't customer specific. And once you've chosen to subdivide, you'll have an option that shows the list of customers. And then you'll have an option that says not specified. So not specified is what you'll want to choose when you are um, you know, looking at something that's overhead in nature that's not specifically uh, applicable to a customer. So let's get out of this since I've already created two. And that brings us into how to edit an existing budget. And once again, once we're in the budget area, pretty straightforward. You just click all the way on the right here where it says edit. So let's edit my 2017 budget here. And as you'll see, once we're in the budget screen, it's really straightforward. I mean, I don't know how much more I can give you in a video tutorial other than just to show you how easy it really is to enter the numbers in. And then one of the features that's here that's really cool. So let's say I want to budget my training services and it's not going to be customer specific because I have you know, lots of different training clients. Many of them are one-offs that come and go. So I don't want to list this by customer. But let's say I want to do $1,500 a month in training revenue. I key in my number and then I click this little right arrow and it just copies it across. 
And then if I say, well, that's the first quarter, but my plan is to increase this to 2,000 a month by the second quarter. So I just come in here and click the 2,000 and then click the right arrow and it updates everything from there to the right. Let's say I want to do a quick formula to quickly add two numbers up, you know, where I'm aware of, you know, I really want to say, you know, uh, I, I, let's say I couldn't add 1,500 plus 500 in my head. You can do the math here. You can say 1,500 plus 500. And then if I hit the tab key, of course, it calculates. And then I can copy that across. You, what you can't do, and I tried it, believe me, is say equals and then point to a, another cell. In other words, you can't write formulas like you can in a spreadsheet. That option is not available. But other than that, it's that simple. And then the other thing I wanted to show you is you have different views, right? So if I click on my gear icon here, I can view it by month, by quarter, or by year. And I want to show you something interesting. If I choose by year, and then let's go into a line item that didn't have anything. Let's say ebooks. And let's say I want to say annually in ebooks, I, I want to do $10,000, right? $1,000 a month. If I put my 10,000 in there and just click away to confirm it's been sort of accepted, and then go back to a monthly view for my ebooks, and you can X out of this so you're not in that sort of data entry mode. If I go back to my monthly view here, you'll see that what it did was it divided my 10,000 evenly over the months when I go back to the monthly view. So you can look at your budget monthly, quarterly, or annually, which is nice. Once you've filled your budget out completely, you might want to check off this option here that says high blank rows, because of course that's going to show you only those things that you've budgeted for, eliminating of course the things where you've said, I don't expect this to have anything in it, right? Because remember, this is pulling from your chart of accounts. So if you have line items in your chart of accounts that you don't expect to um, come up this year, then that option is certainly handy. It makes this a lot easier to sort of read and work with. If you decide you need to access one of them again, just come back in and uncheck it. That's pretty much everything I can show you on how to set up a budget. Now let's take a quick look at the reports that we have on this. So if I go over to the reporting area, and let me go back to the top here. So if I'm in all reports, we want to go to business overview. That's where you'll find the budget-based reports. There are two of them. There's budget overview and budget versus actuals. The budget overview, of course, will give you just what it says, an overview of the budget. Over here you can see when I've clicked on it, it's showing me my 2017 budget, and it shows me everything that I've got in here by month. Right, And it's only showing me the stuff that I have items for. Um, of course, I can change the date range. I can filter it by a specific month to see that. If I go to customize, you'll see some interesting options here under rows or columns where you can choose what to see. So the default was actual versus month, but here I can say accounts versus quarters or accounts versus total. So let's choose accounts versus total and say run report. And you can see that that's what this does, is it just shows you the total by account for the entire year as opposed to monthly. Right? If I go back in here and I show accounts versus quarters, just like it had totaled by month before, this will total it by quarter. So again, pretty straightforward stuff. If I go back to the reports list, I'll show you the budget versus actuals. It's exactly what it says it is. It's going to show you for each month the budgeted number and the actual number and the difference or the percent of budget. And the way this looks at it is it's just, is it over or under budget? So if it's negative 10,000, that means it's under budget. If there's a positive number here, that means it's over budget. On the income side, of course, we want it to be over budget. On the expense side, we want it to be under budget. So if I go out to May here where I actually have some actual data that I entered in, we can see what it looks like when there's actual data to be compared with, right? So we actually invoiced 10,000. The budget was 18. We haven't invoiced as much for the month of May as we, we, we thought we should or would or hoped to, right? Uh, and then, of course, the services were exact. We said it was going to be 9,700. The budget was, no, we said it was going to be 9,700, which is the budget. It was actually 9,700. The under over budget is exactly zero. And over here we have our cost of goods sold figures coming through as well. So again, pretty straightforward. And same deal in terms of the options. I can customize this and I can go into my rows and columns and I can just say actual versus or accounts versus total run reports. And I went through it quickly. Let me jump back in. There's another interesting option here. When I go in here that right here that I can check off, it says only accounts with budgeted amounts. So that's handy if I just want to look at the stuff I budgeted for and compare that with the actuals so that I'm not also looking at things I didn't have a budget for. So, you know, that view is definitely going to 
come in handy for some people. Down here you have some other choices too in terms of showing the dollar over budget and the percent over budget. Maybe I don't care about the dollars, I just want to see the percentages so I can see anything with a significant percentage off from the budget. Those are the things I might want to sort of hone in on and focus on. So uh, those are the reports. That's it, my friends. I showed you how to start a new budget. I showed you how to um, fill in the data across uh, or fill in the data from you know, actuals. I showed you how to copy the data across to fill in the budget very quickly and easily. I showed you the monthly, quarterly, and annual views. And I showed you the reports and some of the options you have in the reports. Best way to do this is actually dive in and just start playing with it yourself. Like you've seen, it's very easy and straightforward. I don't think most of you will have much trouble as always, if you do, just post your comments, ask your questions below, and I'll be happy to answer them as quickly as possible. As always, I hope you uh, learned something here and had some fun along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.